Hello Unity fans and welcome to my first video of 2020. It's time for part 5 of my series of videos in which I'm reviewing and also adding on to Catlike Coding's hex map tutorial. If you haven't seen the previous videos, I'll place links in the description or follow the link in the top right to start at the introduction. Today I'll be showing you examples of how some post-processing can improve the overall look of our completed map. This is not covered in the original tutorials, but I thought I'd play around with it, and it did have quite an interesting impact on the visuals. Of course, you have to install the post-processing package from the package manager under the window menu item to get access to the effects I'm showing you. In order to enable post-processing, we have to make sure that our camera is on a special post-processing layer. Next, we add a post-process layer script and link it to the special post-processing layer. We select SMAA for anti-aliasing and high quality. We'll add a little bit of fog in the background. We need to enable deferred fog and then set the fog settings in the rendering lighting settings panel. We scroll down to the fog settings and select exponential squared so that the fog builds up very gradually in the distance. You can of course play around with these settings and see what you like, but I don't want too much fog in this scenario, so I set the density to 0.002. We also add a post process volume script to which we'll add all our post processing effects. The first effect is ambient occlusion. The brightness of light on different parts of our terrain is now adjusted based on the geography of the map and the rest of the environment. Hidden corners between object edges get darker. You can set the intensity of the occlusion and also change the tint it should take on. Next up, Bloom can give your bright areas more of a glow. Again you can set the intensity and select a tint for the glow. We don't want too much of a bloomin' scenario, so I'm keeping it low for now. With the vignette effect, you can let the borders of the view fade away. You can play around with the intensity, smoothness and roundness to find something you like. Again, we want just a subtle darkening of the edges for now. Using depth of field, you can cause different focus effects on different depths. We can use this to blur the distant parts of our map slightly, but we also don't want to overdo it. A focus distance of just under 4 seems to be working ok in this scenario. The next effect is quite an interesting one for our specific scenario. Our geography is triangulated and rendered as if the land is a flat surface, with slight elevation differences on the same horizontal plane. We can actually give our world the appearance of a globe by using lens distortion. It now appears to be curving, and increasing the intensity will reduce the theoretical size of the planet. There are some problems in the corner where the distortion is extreme, but this could actually be hidden by a game UI, an overlaid frame, or even just the correct vignette settings for now. You could also apply a convex distortion, rather than a concave one, if you wished. You can also play around with the auto exposure to gradually adjust brightness when moving between dark and bright parts of the map, but I'm not really showing any of that here. Finally, screen space reflections improve the reflections of objects on reflective surfaces, but we don't really have that in our scene, so the impact isn't too impressive, and looks a lot like ambient occlusion in this case. So, let's switch on all of these effects at once and see what we have. I think it makes even this low poly environment look a lot better. The most important effect seems to be the ambient occlusion, but the slight impacts of the glow of the bloom, the fog and depth of field adding a bit of blur, and the lens distortion making it look like a spherical world all add a bit of value. The scene has a lot more depth and subtle variations in colors, making it feel fuller and more three dimensional. I hope you enjoyed these post-processing examples and can use some of it in your scenes as well. It really adds a lot of value visually if you can afford it resource-wise. Let me know what you think of the post-processing effects and if you'd like to see more of my additions to this HexMap series, please subscribe and turn on notifications.